Human evolution, from prey to apex predator. Have you ever thought about how one species has gone from being the hunted to becoming the dominant force on our planet, and even changing the way life works on Earth? In this video, we'll take a closer look at how humans have evolved throughout history. We'll start from our early days, when we were just trying to survive in the wild, all the way to how we became the top dogs on Earth. We'll talk about our transition from simple foragers to hunters and pioneering farmers. Stick around till the end and you'll see how this incredible journey has left its mark on our society, our way of thinking and the world as we know it today. Back in the day, our early human relatives, the Ardipithecus and Astrolopithecus, weren't exactly the top of the food chain. They were small, walked on two legs and mostly munched on fruit, leaves and seeds. Imagine them as early vegetarian humans. The catch is, they weren't tough protectors. Males and females were pretty much the same size. So no bodyguards in the group. And their teeth weren't meant for meat. They served as salad tongs. So they weren't dining on steaks, but rather hanging out in the veggie section of the prehistoric menu. These early hominins were the trendsetters of their time when they decided to walk on two legs. Bipedalism, which is just a fancy word for walking on two feet, was a total game changer. Why is it such a big deal? Well, first things first, it gave them a hand, literally. They could carry stuff, make tools, and even throw a mean spear when the occasion called for it. Bipedalism made the commutes more energy efficient. Walking on two legs was like switching to a fuel-efficient car. They could cover more ground without breaking a sweat. And standing tall on two legs meant they could see over tall grass and spot danger or dinner from a distance. Plus, it helped them keeping cool under the sun, like their built-in air conditioning. Breathing-wise, bipedalism allowed for some top-notch lung action. They could take deep breaths for those times when they needed to swiftly escape from danger or pursue some food. So, our ancient relatives were like the original DIY enthusiasts. They picked up rocks and sticks and turned them into Swiss army knives of their day. Initially, these tools were handy for scavenging, like cracking open nuts or getting at the good stuff inside bones. But as they got the hang of it, they realized tools weren't just for snacking. Enter the hunting game. With sharp-edged stones and pointy spears, our ancestors had a leg up in the food chain. These tools extended their reach, turning them from scavengers into skilled hunters. Suddenly, they were dining on prime cuts of the prehistoric menu. As they dined on this protein-packed diet, something incredible happened. Their brains started to grow. We call it a cognitive revolution that was happening. These bigger brains gave them an edge in problem-solving, planning and communication. They could outsmart their prey and strategize for their next meal. This wasn't just about thinking smart though. Bigger brains meant better teamwork. They could coordinate on hunts, protect each other from danger, and even divvy up resources more efficiently. It is like the dawn of human collaboration. Next in line were Homo hubilis and Homo erectus. They weren't the kings of the hunting scene just yet. Instead, they played a clever card and turned into nature's cleanup crew. Picture this. You're in a savanna, and a big cat or gang of hyenas just finished a successful hunt. These early hominins thought, why bother with the hard work when we can have leftovers? So, let's sneak in and grab a piece of the action, quite literally. Scavenging was like hitting the jackpot, because it meant they could feast on top-notch protein without breaking a sweat. It was sort of getting a VIP pass to a protein-packed party. This protein boost fueled their bodies, fueled their brains, and made them better survivors. Plus, it was less risky than going head-to-head -head with a ferocious beast. They didn't have to wrestle with a mammoth for dinner. Instead, they played the patient game and enjoyed the fruits of others' labor. But all the scavenging was just training wheels for future hunting. They learned the ropes of the game, understood animal behavior, and figured out the lay of the land. Time to talk about our early ancestors' career shift from scavengers to hunters. It's like they upgraded from using a rock as a doorstop to wielding a lightsaber, an evolution game-changer. Now. Meet Homo erectus, the rock star of hunting. These folks weren't winging it, they were the action heroes of their time. They crafted sharp spears and knew how to use them. They weren't leaving things to chance. And they weren't just going after small fry. They had their eyes on the big game. Think mammoths and wild boar, and they weren't alone. They realized that teaming up had some major perks. They formed tight-knit groups, and it wasn't just a casual get-together. These groups were like the Avengers of the prehistoric world. First off, they hunted as a squad, Picture a group of them taking down a mammoth. It was like a well-rehearsed action scene, but with spears instead of stunt doubles. 
safety was another big plus. They had each other's backs when dealing with predators. Strength in numbers was their survival strategy, and it wasn't just a catchy phrase. And when it came to dinner, they shared. It was similar to a potluck dinner where everyone brought something to the table. They made sure no one went hungry, and that built strong bonds within the group. They developed real strategies, signals, and plans, like a sophisticated team. Social groups weren't just about survival, they were about creating a legacy. Skills, knowledge, and traditions were passed down from one generation to the next. It was the first schools of life. Now, imagine a chilly night in the Stone Age. It's dark, it's cold, and you're on the menu for every predator out there. Then, boom, fire enters the scene, and suddenly, you've got warmth and a fortress against the lurking threats. It's like turning your campsite into the Ritz Carlton of the prehistoric world. But here's the real sizzle, cooking. It made food easier to digest, unlocked more nutrients, and turned them into culinary geniuses. They were the first ever chefs of the Stone Age. And the best part, it wasn't just about their stomachs, it was also about their brains. Cooking gave them a nutrient boost, supercharging the energy levels and brain power. But fire also became the community's hotspot. They gathered around the campfire, sharing stories and strategies. And let's not forget that fire was the ultimate guardian against the weather. Rain, wind, or cold night. No problem. Fire was their all-weather buddy, like the first ever weather-resistant cloak. So around 200,000 years ago, our star players, the Homo sapiens, hit the scene. They weren't just another character in the evolutionary play. They were the headliners. First up, brains. They had big brains that could plan, strategize, and innovate like no other. Think of them as the Einsteins of the prehistoric world. When it came to hunting, they were like a mix of MacGyver and a military strategist. Bows and arrows, traps, and teamwork. They had it all in their hunting toolkit. Their diet was like a buffet of options. They didn't stick to just one thing. They could hunt a wide range of animals, fish, and gather plants. Their adaptability was key. But here's the fun part. They didn't stop at the hunting wild game. They started a petting zoo with species like dogs and even domesticated livestock. They were like the pioneers of the first ever farm-to-table movement. And when it came to the environment, they weren't passive residents. They actively shaped and modified landscapes to suit their needs. In this journey through human evolution, we've seen how our ancestors, from Ardipithecus to Homo sapiens, went from being prey to becoming the apex predator of the planet. They adapted, they evolved and innovated, shaping not only their destiny, but also the world as we know it today.